Welcome to the ADO 71, a fantastic concept ultimately blighted by those turbulent British Leyland years. The 1822 series was introduced in March 1975 as Austin, Morris and Wolseley, replacing the much maligned Land Crab. But what's it really like to drive one of these? Well, we thought we'd go in this wonderful example to find out. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. So welcome to this 1977 Leyland Princess. And if you ever really wanted a car that best summed up the chaos and the disruption of the British Leyland years in the 70s, the Princess is probably as good a place to start as any. It was unveiled in March 1975 with the 1.7 and 2.2 petrol engines mated to either a four-speed manual or three-speed automatic, hydrogas suspension, and crucially, that fabulous Harris Mann penned bodywork. It had this futuristic sleek shape aligned to tried and tested mechanicals. And it was very well received by the press and the public alike initially. The styling was well received, the ride and handling and the refinement were very positively regarded. And that meant that many people were happy to overlook shortcomings, notably the performance. 0 to 60 in the 2.2 was just over 13 seconds. I mean, that's glacial and the top speed was 104 miles an hour. And the fuel economy wasn't that good either, with road testers at the time claiming they couldn't get much more than over 20 to the gallon. But a starting price of 2,000 pounds, it was competitively priced, and of course, you could pick the name badge that suited you, an Austin, Morris, or Wolseley equivalent. But it all starts to go rather wrong shortly after that. Literally a month after the car goes on sale, the Cowley factory in Oxfordshire, where it was produced, went out on strike. So just when they should be producing the car in droves to meet that demand, so they can't even build them anymore. And throughout 75, that remained to be the case. Strikes and disruption meant that they weren't building them in sufficient numbers. And when they were building them, they weren't building them consistently to a high standard. You weren't even guaranteed you were gonna get the spec that you wanted. Throughout 1975, the British car industry went from one disaster to another. It was eventually nationalised and come the latter half of 1975 the Wolseley name was completely scrapped and Austin and Morris badges on this the 1822 series were abandoned and it just became known as the Leyland Princess. The trouble is those sort of formative early months were really do or die and it wasn't long after that that the reputation started to collapse. Rumours of broken drive shafts and collapsed suspension were abound and people's perception of the car plummeted as a result. And of course, this is at a time when you're starting to get really quite fierce competition from Ford and Vauxhall, and even the Japanese are starting to make inroads at this point. The British car industry is only really protected by this point by the gentleman's agreement, which prevents Japanese cars from coming into the country in any mass number. So while things did gradually improve throughout 1976 and 1977, arguably the damage was already done by then. Come 1978, the Princess 2 was introduced, finally bringing in the delayed O-series engines that the car was originally meant to have. So as was often the case with British Leyland cars, by the late 70s, the Princess was the car it should have been at launch. But arguably those buyers that had wanted one had already had one, and those that were there to be converted were scared off by those reputations of the early cars. So come 1980, work started on the significant facelift of the Princess, which ultimately became the Austin Ambassador in 1982. It bestowed the car with the hatchback body shape that it perhaps should have had again from launch in 1975. But other than that, the facelift was really unsuccessful. The styling didn't look as accomplished as the Princess that it replaced. The car was outdated and outmoded by the competition and consequently it limped on for two miserable years replaced in 1984 by the Austin Montego. During that time, around 224,000 princesses were made and around 43,000 ambassadors. In the scheme of things, that's pigeon feed compared to how many Ford Cortinas would have been sold. So what are they really like to drive? The truth is really, really good. The performance is slow. This is a 2.2 HLS model, which would have effectively been the Wolseley edition, which is why you've got all the creature comfort, soft velour seats, armrests, We've even got this lovely retractable Wabasto roof. But yeah, it's really comfortable inside. The ride is lovely and soft. The steering is, is, is light. This thin, feeble steering wheel doesn't do much for confidence, but it's light and it, it's fine. The ergonomics 
are great. This interior is basic, but it all works. All the switch gear on the top right here, three very visible gauges, an analog clock, the ventilation controls close to hand, a nice high up radio. It's all really to hand and it's just delightful to drive. It's quite a bit of roll. You go around this corner here. It leans quite a lot, but I think if you accept this is no performance machine, and just enjoy the journey, enjoy wafting along in comfort, then you get what this princess is all about. I think the styling has really aged well. If you were to simply account for the fact that it might need some modern accoutrements to make it pass various crash legislation, I think this shape would pass muster today. As is often the case with British Leyland cars, it's a case of so near and yet so far. As a concept, it was great. It did everything it needed to do. It modernized the land crab that it replaced very, very well indeed and just moved the game on. But it was hampered by all those disruptions in the factory, it really killed its chances before it even really got started. Another classic chapter in the British Leyland book of what might have been. This car's a real survivor as well. It was about to be scrapped in 2010 under the scrappage scheme but was saved by its current owner and has been given lots of TLC in the meantime. And it continues to deliver great classic car ownership because it's just such a lovely car. I think the Princess has now found its way into the hands of all those people that do actually want to own them. And the prospects of being able to buy another one is really quite remote. But the Princess for me is probably one of the best examples of how British engineering, British ingenuity was scuppered through a series of circumstances beyond its ultimate control. Dismiss the princess at your peril. I think it's an absolute beauty and it deserved much greater success than it ever ultimately achieved. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.